Okay, this is the last example we'll take. It's about getting the magnetic field due to an infinite charge, a uh, sheet of charge that's moving, which means it has a current, makes a current. So if you imagine you get a sheet of charge, positive charge for instance, and the whole sheet moves upwards with some speed. That means you have a current in the YZ plane. And it's an infinite sheet. So, of course, this is an, an idealization, but this is the only kind of problem we can solve easily. So that's why we take these simple problems. And then we want to find what the magnetic field is then at any point on the x-axis, whether the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis. So let's look from above. If you look at the problem from above, looking down, um, what do you see? You're going to see the x-z uh, axis like that and then the the sheet will appear to you as just a line so this is the way it is there's the x z axis and the sheet just appears as a line and so here the dots circle with the dots means that the current is coming out of the page of course i put the sheet with some thickness here but of course it should be it's very thin i mean i don't i don't want there to be any thickness i just put the thickness so you can see the sheet but the current is coming out of the page everywhere and it's infinite so let's think, what is the direction of the magnetic field at a point over here, for instance? Well, if you take this line, uh, imagine the sheet to be consisting of an infinite number of infinite lines, thin infinite lines, right? If you put a thin infinite line next to an infinite thin, thin line, an infinite thin line, an infinite thin line, all next to each other, it'll make a sheet. So imagine just one of those thin lines, this one. What is the magnetic field that it produces at this point just due to that thin line? Well, you know that the magnetic field for a thin line, an infinite thin line, it goes around in circles. So uh, when you get to this point, it'll be making an angle like this. It'll be making an angle 90 degrees with, the li with this line, but it'll be making an angle like that in space. And what if you get the magnetic field due to this thin line, which is exactly the same distance away from the x-axis? Also, the magnetic field due to this infinite line goes round in circles and it's perpendicular to this line and so it's making an angle like that with respect to in space. If you put both of them at the same time, you can see that the components in the x direction will cancel and the component in the, in the, in the z direction, the negative z direction, will add and so the total magnetic field at this point will be upwards. Uh, because any two opposite thin lines that you take, the same thing will happen. So the magnetic field is going to be upwards. And so this is the magnetic field just, to, just due to this line and this line. But in general, the total magnetic field will also be upwards because any two other thin lines will have the same effect. So what about magnetic field at a point on the left of the sheet? If you look at the magnetic field due to this line, thin line, infinite line, makes a magnetic field going round in circles and so it'll be pointing downwards at some angle. And if you look at the magnetic field due to this infinite thin line, the same distance away from the x-axis, you'll get a magnetic field going downwards at this angle. When you add the two, you're going to see that the component in the x-direction will cancel, the component in, the, in this direction will add, and so the total magnetic field here will be pointing downwards. So we've concluded just from uh, th thinking about the symmetry of the problem that the magnetic field on the right will be pointing upwards and the magnetic field on the left will be pointing downwards. Wherever you go on the left, it'll be pointing downwards. Wherever you go on the right, it'll be pointing upwards. So now we want to try to use Ampere's law to find this value of the magnetic field. So let's take an Amperian loop to be in the shape of a rectangle. And uh, it's a closed loop and we put it equidistant so it's right centered on the sheet and so this point has the same distance away from the sheet as this point and we take the ds vectors to go around this way why do we take the ds vectors to go around this way because when you put your fingers around ds the thumb will point out of the page which is in the same direction as the current and so the 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 mu node the right hand side will be positive so that's why we took the ds to be going around this way so let's apply ampere's law Integration of b dot ds around the closed loop, you can cut it up into the top, left, bottom, and right. Top, left, bottom, and right. Now, for the top side, the magnetic field, we said it's always pointing 
upwards here and here downwards so the angle between the magnetic field and the ds vectors is always zero for the top side so you get zero for the left side the magnetic field is in the same direction as ds and so this will give a contribution of course and for the for the bottom side the magnetic field here points down and here it points up it's always perpendicular to ds so you get no contribution for the right side b and ds point in the same direction and so you get a contribution and it turns out that the contribution then here for the right side is exactly the same as the one for the left side and they're both positive because b and ds are in the same direction here and b and ds are in the same direction here so you get a positive quantity here you get a positive quantity here for the top and the bottom you get zeros so this is the situation we have we have integration of b ds because b dot ds becomes b ds b is in the same direction as ds so the dot product becomes b ds and here it also becomes b ds it's exactly the same both positive quantities now the magnetic field here from symmetry i don't know what the value is but if i go to a distance over here on the right side I expect from symmetry that the magnetic field on the left side will be the same value so the B is the same and it's the same value as you move along this side because the sheet is infinite as you move along this line everything from symmetry it's, it's the same exactly you don't get any closer or farther away from the end of the sheet because it's an infinite sheet so the magnetic field anywhere along this part is the same and the magnetic field anywhere on this part is the same and the magnetic field here is the same as the magnetic field here so b goes out here b goes out here and this b is the same as this b so um, the b goes out of the integration you get b integration of ds and b integration of ds what's integration of ds integration of ds is just this length you're adding this element of length plus this one plus this one from here to here and you're getting the integration of ds from here to here which is just this length so if the length of this is just l then the, this is just bl and this is bl so the total the left hand side is just reduces to simply 2bl now how could we write the current enclosed inside the loop in some way in some mathematical way well we can define something called linear current density we can go along this sheet and see how much current there is per unit length. This is very different than the case we took before for current per unit area. You took, in that case, current divided by an area. Here we're taking current divided by length on the sheet as you go along this sheet th this, way, this way. So we can define something called J. JS is current per unit length. If you multiply current by unit length times the length, it'll give you the current in a certain length. So if we want the current from here to here, we take JS, which is the current per unit length, and we multiply by the length we want. And that'll give us the total current that's enclosed inside this loop. So you see here that the L will cancel with the L, and you can then find that the magnetic field is one half mu node times this current per unit length. And remember, just make sure that you remember that when I talk about current density, Js, it's not the same as the J that you took before. The J you took before was current per unit area. This is current per unit length.